Let's return again to Chesterton. When men stop believing in the true God, they do not then believe nothing. They then believe anything. And that's where we are. Many in Western culture, especially our so-called elite, no longer believe in the God of the Bible. And that makes them vulnerable to all kinds of crazy fears, fears that have no basis in reality and which they create in their own minds. Why do they invent such fictions? Because the elite have found a fearful populace can be easily ruled and manipulated. But why do people believe this nonsense? Because they do not place their trust in the true God of Scripture. At the top of the list of invented crises is catastrophic climate change, with an emphasis on the catastrophic. I am not arguing here that the earth is not warming. What I am arguing against is the absurd conclusions progressives come to as a result of different weather events. A reader of the New York Times recently recited a list of fears due to a changing climate. Species extinction, more widespread disease, unlivable heat, ecosystem collapse, cities menaced by rising seas. This is all absurd. None of these fears is grounded in reality. Last Wednesday, Bjorn Lomborg, the president of an environmental think tank, wrote an article in the Wall Street Journal. It was entitled, Polar Bears, Dead Coral, and Other Climate Fictions. He opened with this comment, quote, Whatever happened to polar bears? They used to be all the climate campaigners could talk about, but now they're essentially absent from headlines. Over the past 20 years, climate activists have elevated various stories of climate catastrophe then quietly drop them without apology when the opposing evidence becomes overwhelming. The only constant is the scare tactics." End quote. So why have climate doomsters stopped talking about polar bears? Because in the last 20 years, their numbers have more than doubled. Again, quote, the same thing has happened with activists' outcry about Australia's Great Barrier Reef. For years, they shouted that the reef was being killed off by rising sea temperatures, end quote. But recently, it has been found that the reef has actually increased in size and is bigger than it has ever been. And one more example from Lomborg, quote, more recently, green campaigners were warning that small Pacific islands would drown as sea levels rose. About a month ago, the New York Times finally shared what it called surprising climate news. Almost all atoll islands are stable or increasing in size." End quote. I could go on and on cataloging this silliness, but you get the picture. The catastrophes of catastrophic climate change are one of the progressive left's manufactured crises. Let's consider others. How about white Christian nationalism? Numerous left-wing media outlets and authors argue that America is about to be taken over by so-called white Christian nationalists, or WCNs. A WCN allegedly believes things like the federal government should declare the United States a Christian nation, advocate Christian values, allow prayer in public schools, and they believe the success of the United States is part of God's plan. A recent documentary, God and Country, argues that Christian nationalism threatens to destroy American democracy and replace it with religious rule. A new Republican administration, it is said, would fill government jobs with right-wing psychos who want to ban birth control and abortion and usher in fascism. This is strictly a leftist bogeyman. It is a manufactured crisis for people who are terrified of everything because they no longer trust in God. If WNCs exist at all, their numbers are tiny and they have very little influence. Ask yourself these questions. What academic department at any university in America is controlled by WCNs? What government bureaucracy exists to do their bidding? 
What major piece of legislation are they pushing through Congress? What Hollywood studio is under their control, cranking out movies that promote WCN values? Who is more likely to be violent, WCNs or BLM protesters? Let's look at a third manufactured crisis, systemic racism and the war on black Americans. There is an entire industry built around this hoax, DEI or diversity, equality and inclusion are now bureaucracies designed to address this supposed crisis and they exist at most major universities and it is treated as settled law in most government bureaucracies. DEI has made enormous inroads into corporate America. Last spring at a graduation, the President of the United States said that white supremacy is the greatest threat facing America. He said it is an ongoing conspiracy against black Americans, denying them their rightful place in American life. Nothing could be further from the truth. American society has made heroic efforts to elevate African Americans and has largely succeeded. One could argue that this is the best country in the history of the world for a black person to live in. Our black population is the richest in the history of the world. It is politically the freest and most powerful. African Americans are successful in every area of endeavor and are disproportionately superior in some of them. We have just finished the Olympics, a spectacle watched and celebrated by millions of white Americans. Did you notice any presence of black Americans? The argument that they are singled out for oppression by the police has been debunked over and over again. Read anything by Heather McDonald on this subject. I have linked one of her articles below. The African-American United States Senator from South Carolina, Tim Scott, recently said the mantra of systemic racism, quote, is a dangerous, offensive, disgusting message to send to our young people today, end quote. Instead of wringing our hands, we should be shouting black achievement from the housetops. Black failure is a manufactured and imaginary crisis created by the left. Then there is January 6, 2021. The progressive left called it an insurrection to take over the American government and end democracy as we know it. One current presidential candidate compared it to Pearl Harbor and 9-11. The majority leader of the United States Senate said the same thing. This is ridiculous. January 6th was not a proud moment in American history, but Pearl Harbor, please. A political protest became a riot and the halls of Congress were briefly occupied. No one brought a gun. One person was killed, one of the protesters by a Capitol Hill policeman. If you're going to overthrow the U.S. government, you should at least bring guns. The same people who condemned January 6 made little mention of the George Floyd riots the previous summer that caused $2 billion in damage and burned down half of America's downtowns. But the left has leveraged this event, manufacturing a crisis in order to gain political advantage. One more manufactured crisis of the left has been labeled rural white rage. This too has been called a threat to the world's oldest constitutional democracy. Leftist academics have stated that rural whites are, quote, the most racist, xenophobic, anti-immigrant, anti-gay demographic group in the country, end quote. On top of this, rural whites are also most likely to excuse or justify violence as an acceptable alternative to peaceful public discourse. This is ridiculous and the opposite of the truth. Rural America is the least violent place in our country. Left-wing hatred of rural America is primarily because people vote the wrong way. They aren't racist or violent. They just don't vote for left-wing candidates. There is no data whatsoever to back up the above assertions about rural America. This is just another crisis invented by the progressive left. 
Next time, the left-wing press trots out a new crisis, an existential threat to America, remember that it is probably manufactured and has no basis in reality. What bothers me most is the progressives' willful blindness to the blessings we enjoy in modern life, given to us by a benevolent and good God. They enjoy the richest, healthiest, most secure lives any human beings have ever had. Yet their ungodliness leads to fear, worry, and hand-wringing of the worst sort. They don't need to be fighting imaginary catastrophes. They need to change their religious beliefs. They need to turn to the God of Scripture and be healed. Thanks for listening. May our gracious God continue to bless you in a mighty way.